Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. Good morning, everybody. Well, science is great um, if I don't have it to do it myself. It took me, it took me a while to come to this conclusion, and um, I'll try to present to you my, my humble career path over the past 15 years. And actually, when I was preparing my talk for today, I also took a book out of my bookshelf, as Suliana did. Um, it's not a career book at all, but I remember that I read back in 2003, 4, when I was dealing with this question, <laughs> what should I do? I read a book that actually gives you the answer to all questions. <laughs> it's 42. Some of you may know it's, it's about the, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxies, and, and it's the answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything. Um, if you know the story, the, there are some, some beings that construct a super hyper intelligent computer that is uh, calculating for 7.5 million years the answer to the question, and at the end says it's 42, but still points out that the answer seems to be meaningless, as actually the question has never been clear. And that's why probably I remember that I read this book, because at the times I wasn't sure uh, about what questions I should ask myself, nor whether the answers I got were the right ones. So, um, I did my studies in Bern, which is my hometown, and then moved, um, also did my master in Bern, did a PhD in, in Bonn, Germany, and then already came back to Switzerland, you may see a pattern there, um, and I worked at Fribourg, where I also met Nico, and in Basel for a short time, and I did my PhD, I don't know whether I managed to start the movie, I did work on sperm competition, which is the question of the other, apparently it doesn't work, which is the question um, of the evolutionary consequences of, of sperm of several males competing for the fertilization of eggs. And um, at the time, we were among the first that worked with a computer animation. So we, we put a fish, we sliced the fish, scanned the slices, put them together in the computer, and then made it move, made like a courting dance, so the, the dance that males usually do, to attract females, and then we checked whether they would invest more or less sperm, depending on, um, the, for example, the color of the male or the size of the male. So males that see the, the, the rival male. So this is something, well, industry is not necessarily looking for that kind of experience. <laughs> and nevertheless, I was fascinated by, by, by evolutionary biology. So I continued and changed the topic to um, the coevolution of hosts and parasites, the arms races between the two. So the parasites tend to become, or should maybe become, in some situations, more virulent and hosts try to become resistant, and you have an arms race which is um, going on. That was my postdoc time in Fribourg, and um, well, that was also the time when these questions popped up. And of course, um, in parallel to my scientific career, I also had a, 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 a private life. Um, and this gives them the other, you know, half of the story of my career. As I already said, I'm rooted in Bern. I have there my friends, my family. I had uh, my hobbies. I had my DJ business at the time. I, well, did play floorball in a team. All things I really loved. When I finished my master in Bern, I had a stable relationship. And then I moved to Bonn, and my girlfriend stayed in Bern, and the long-distance relationship turned, to be, turned out to be a short-duration relationship. And, so, um, when, when, and then I came back to, to, to Fribourg as a postdoc, back home again. And then I, again, I, I met that beautiful girl, which happens to be my wife today, uh, which was, of course, also a complication in my, uh, for my career decisions afterwards. 
So, um, a whole lot of questions for the, the decision which I still consider one of the most important in my life. What, um, what to do in my career? You know, kind of, some of the questions, what are my chances of, for a successful career in science? I wasn't aware of the 3% at the time. Um, how much would I miss this great spirit and the life, the groove at the university if I left it? Do I want to continue what I did for the past four or five years as a postdoc for the next 35 years? You know, doing an experiment, planning an experiment, performing an experiment, doing the analyzers, writing up the stuff, trying to publish in here and there and, and, and get those, those rejection letters and, 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 and rework everything. Is it what I want? And then to start again. Am I or are we ready to leave Switzerland? So myself or as a couple. And to live a life of four years here and four years there. And what the heck could I do other than research after all? Um, I talked to my family about, of course, my questions. Uh, which uh, has no idea about the academic world. I talked to my postdoc friends who were all more or less in the same situation, and they did not, they didn't either, <laughs> know what, what are the answers. I talked to my boss, of course, who uh, obviously had succeeded to make his way uh, in, in academia, and, and uh, you know, he, he could not really, I think he could never really understand my doubts and questions. That's, that was my impression. Um, and on top of that, he didn't really have an idea about the non-academic world. And um, what I never did, but Nick Gold did much better, I think, than I did. I never talked to scientists that had made the step outside science before. Um, and this is something I regret. I found my way, luckily. But um, this is something which is maybe a good thing and for which I think like this seminar today is really uh, important. So I decided to look beyond the garden fence of science and make the giant step and became a scientific manager, scientific administrator. In uh, 2005 I started at the SNSF as a scientific collaborator at the division Biology and Medicine. Now, what does it mean to be a scientific administrator? You work at the interface between the researchers. You have a research council at the SNSF, which is the some, some hundred Swiss professors that are the ones that finally decide on any grant application at the SNSF. So you coordinate, um, you manage, you administer uh, a whole lot during the whole day. And you read a lot, you have to read a lot, you have to write a lot, and you have a lot of correspondence. Uh, you become a policy maker. You have to deal with, I had to deal with revisions of internal regulations, but also on things like writing a position paper on a new law on, 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 on the research on humans or animal uh, protection laws. So it was a completely different work and I, and I loved it. And one of the most, the, the most striking differences, actually, is indeed the work group. So you are used to work in a group which is mainly young people. Then there's a one professor, maybe one assistant that is slightly older. And then you changed into a system where you're actually among the youngest. And most of the people are older and, and have this completely different interests than you have. So it's way more heterogeneous, uh, the, your work uh, environment. And this is something I had to get used to. And then I changed uh, after a couple of years and I came, became the assistant to the head of division. So my work got even more, uh, got even more meant into the direction management, coordination. And I became responsible for, for all policy issues that the division biology and medicine was concerned with. Like yeah, things like human embryonic stem cells, scientific misconduct, gender equality in science. And uh, in parallel, I then started a, 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 a new um, 
formation, I did a master in public administration at the EDAP, which um, was thought to give me some background on the work I was actually doing every day. So project management, public management, policy making, some basics in economy and in evaluation uh, theory. And I improved, of course, my, my French skills, which is something which is important as soon as you start to work in the, in the federal administration. And it was also the hardest part of this, of this thing. <laughs> and then since 2014 now, I'm head of the unit NCCR, so I'm responsible for, for this uh, on the administrative side. Of course, you always have the research council uh, on the administrative side for this instrument NCCR. Um, and, and the team which is working with me, and we are admis uh, managing the, the running NCCRs, we are organizing the new call, which is out now. And, um, well, it's, it's, a, it's a very interesting, for me, very interesting work. So just two slides on the NCCRs. Um, maybe for those that don't know, it's a, it's a, f a scheme, a funding scheme of the the Confederation, which had the idea to promote, um, of course, scientific excellence in priority domains, and that are all, and they are always connected to a home institution, so a university or a or an ETH. And um, they are thought to develop competencies in strategically important domains. What uh, what that means is to be defined by the Research Council and by the Federal Council. And of course, they, they, they don't only build centers, but also promote networks. And now the goals of the individual NCCR is, of course, excellent research, and is also the structuring and the interlinkage of the research landscape in Switzerland. But also the promotion of young scientists, the promotion of gender equality, and that's why this event is, is today here. And also the promotion of knowledge and technology transfer in science communication. So they do more, the NCCR do more than just uh, good or brilliant science. So this is, these are the running NCC, well, these are the running NCCRs, but I have to say the second series is, is terminating right now, these days. So, 2003, I asked myself, what the heck could I do other than research, and what skills do I have? So this was the mark version 2003 that asked this question, and now the Mark version 2017 can give some answers to, to my for, former myself. Actually a lot, Mark. <laughs> you, you bring along a set of skills that you, you can use in a lot of jobs. You're self-motivated most of the time, and diligent. You're reasonably intelligent, and you're a critical thinker that you have proven you're your postdoc. Actually, as a postdoc, you have used a lot of skills that are in a job offer described as project management. You have your own, had your own budget in parts. You had your project that you want to, to, uh, to get running. And you, uh, for myself, that's now personal, I organized big parties when I was younger. I worked as a DJ. Uh, yeah, write this, these things in your CV because they document what you did in your life. These are also skills and sometimes people for, simply forget to, to write these things in their CVs. Um, I, have write, I have writing skills, not only the scientific writing, but I also did other things, like editing my Floorball Club newsletter. Um, I have had, already had some leadership skills. I guided master students. When I was a postdoc, I worked as a teacher when I was a student, I uh, worked in a refugee camp, things like that. So, and I'm able to speak German at the time, some French and English, and I have been proved as a postdoc, of course, to be stress resistant. So, um, yes, Mark, <laughs> that was a good decision, <laughs> well done. So, I'm ready to take questions, thank you. Thank you, thank you much.